Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Carl's Tech Shed. Well it's been around seven months since I uploaded my last teardown video. The simple reason for that is that seven months ago I started my own business. So all of my spare time and all of my energy has, has gone into developing my business. So that's why I haven't been able to upload any videos recently. So I do apologise for that. However, what I've got around me is a load of old tech which I picked up from a computer recycling company. Now what I want to do is uh, show you what I bought and then I'll do some teardowns. Okay, well to start with we've got this little AMX tablet PC. Up here we've got a HP Ultrastore Optical 40FX library. Now just here we've got this old IBM system. I haven't really done much research on this but it certainly looks much older than anything I've done a teardown of on this channel before. Uh, above that we've got this little dedicated micro system. Um, this, is, this looks like some sort of CCTV unit where you could have uh, multiple CCTV cameras displayed on a single monitor. Up here we've got a BT Kilostream modem. Uh, over here we've got some unusual piece of kit. I haven't really done much research on it so I'll have to look into that but it looks like some sort of uh, tester or analysis equipment. Now over here I've got another tablet PC. Now this is interesting because originally when I bought it I thought it was some sort of uh, early tablet computer but what it looks like is some sort of transfer device so um, you plug uh, two tablets or mobile phones into here so you've got source here and destination here and uh, what it will do is it will duplicate or clone or copy all of the data from one device over to the other. And up here we've got uh, an alarm charge hub. Um, I'm not actually sure what this is. Again, I haven't really done much research on this yet. So um, it looks like some sort of charging unit because there's no uh, there's no real information there's no real information about this um, on the system. But it looks like it's just a basic charging unit because it's got a power input at the back and it's got a series of these RJ11 jacks at the front. So um, judging by the name of it as well, it suggests to me that it's some sort of charger. And last but certainly not least, I've got a pair of these uh, HP Ultrim LTO3 libraries. Now I'm only going to be doing a teardown on one of these because they're, they're both identical, so they're both going to have exactly the same, uh, same things inside. But hopefully with a bit of luck uh, there might be a tape inside one of them so I can show you it moving around. Well to start with I'm going to do a teardown of this little IBM system because I'm very curious as to what it is and uh, I'd love to see what's inside it. Well this is the back of the IBM unit. As you can see this is an IBM Type 3174. Um, I have had a look around the unit but I can't seem to find a manufacturing date at least not on the outside. Now we'll start on this side, we've just got a standard IEC power input, um, we've got a DB25 male connector and we've got a series of four BNC ports here. Now this is obviously not a desktop PC because you'd expect to find serial, uh, a mouse keyboard and most importantly a, a VGA output and possibly even some expansion slots but this is definitely not uh, a, a desktop PC. So I'm, I, I reckon this is some sort of terminal uh, system for, for accessing some sort of uh, server or token ring, something like that. I'm not entirely sure because it's so old. Well first of all let's, uh, let's see if it powers on, that's the important thing. Okay well as you can see the front of the unit is missing uh, a piece of plastic which goes across the front. Um, now in the front here we have a five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. Um, there's actually a disk in here. Uh, it looks like the last time this disk, or the last, when this disk was was written on, was uh, October 1997. So uh, if we pop that back in there, over here we've got a little uh, LED display, uh, seven segment display here. Um, we've got a couple of old-fashioned LEDs here and three tactile switches. So let's power this on and see what happens. Right, I just heard the uh, motor start to spin inside the floppy disk drive, so uh, let's see if we can... Oh, that changed to 11 and I didn't touch it, so uh, I wonder what this is going to do. Let's see if we can get it to do something. 
Right, as far as I can tell, these buttons aren't doing anything at the moment. That seems to be some sort of reset, so that tends to reset the system to um, its original state when it was powered on. But these buttons don't seem to do anything, at least while it's on this uh, status 10. So um, I'm not entirely sure what this is doing. This um, display keeps changing to number 11 after about 10 or 15 seconds of it being powered on without any interference on any of the buttons. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to wait a few minutes and, and see if this does anything else. Well after about a minute or so, um, this number here changed from, I think it was on 11 or 10, uh, and then it changed to 133. The disk drive uh, had a series of uh, what seemed like random seeks across the disk, uh, and then when that stopped this changed back to 130. Um, I'm not sure if these buttons are... yeah, this, is this has now changed it to 126, 124, 121. So, this is obviously um, changing the mode that this that this system's in, but without a manual or, um, or or any type of key to work out what these numbers mean, it's difficult for me to know uh, what this is actually doing or what any of these digits mean. So um, I'm going to see if I can get this power. I'm going to power cycle this again. See if I can show you um, when this changes and when the disk starts seeking. So as you saw there, it went through some sort of test sequence or, or self-test system. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what it was doing, uh, but uh, the number changed from, uh, I think it was 10 or 11 up to 113, not 133 as I, as I thought it was. Um, and then it's dropped back down to 130, and as you saw, this uh, check cond light came on. So I'm quite sure that that's uh, some sort of error because I haven't got anything connected to this at the moment. Um, because obviously this is a very old system, so I'm not really sure uh, what this would connect into. Well, I've I've been sitting here now for a few minutes, and and it's it's remained on this 130 status. So I don't think we're going to be able to get it to do anything else. So um, why don't we take a look inside it? Well, now that I've taken the cover off, as you can see, um, the actual main board is covered by this this metal can. Um, this is this is nothing special. This is this is just steel. Um, but we've got a very large fan here. Now, as far as I could tell, this wasn't actually operating when I had this powered on. So either the fan is faulty, which I, is highly unlikely, or um, this only comes on when when the system reaches a certain temperature. Because as you can imagine, these systems are designed to be uh, left on 24 hours a day for many many years. So uh, you would. Want Want a fan in there uh, if, it, if it became too hot. Uh, now here we've just got the standard five and a quarter inch floppy drive which is connected down here. Um, this small cable goes down onto the main board here. Um, now we've got uh, the main power cable coming in here going down onto the board and we've just got a small uh, ferrite core in a piece of plastic on there. Now this is rather interesting. I I don't really know what this is, but we'll we'll take a look. Um, this is held in by two of these thumb screws. So if we pull this out, now it's very uh, 
heavily heat sinked with this large block of uh, what looks like aluminium or it could even be magnesium um, which is on the outside. There is a part number here so I might have a look at that on Google quickly and see what it is. Um, but if you have a look here there's a series of pins and this looks very similar to uh, a modern PCI connector. Uh, well I say modern, not PCI Express but the older 32-bit uh, uh, PCI um, although I'm sure the pinout is completely different although the connector looks very similar if not identical. So I'm going to have a quick look at this part number and I'll uh, see what this is and then we'll, uh, we'll take it apart. Right, well I've googled the part number from this small uh, metal cladded module and uh, all I can find on Google is a series of websites uh, supplying this second hand part and it looks like it's just simply a, a 2 megabyte uh, memory expansion. So um, we'll take a look inside and uh, we'll see what sort of memory it uses. And as you can see, Google was right as usual. Um, in, inside this little can were just a series of these uh, SIM memory chips. So uh, this is obviously just a memory upgrade which someone's added at a later date because from what I could find, uh, these originally came with uh, a one megabyte memory expansion. So uh, this, is, this being a two megabyte has been upgraded at some point. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the floppy drive, the fan and this steel plate which goes over the main board and uh, we'll see what's underneath there. Okay, well there's obviously a lot more surface mount components on this board than I first expected uh, judging by the perceived age of the, of the device before I took the lid off. Now, uh, I'll be honest with you, originally I was expecting this to be about uh, mid to late 1980s, but it turns out this is uh, considerably newer. Um, it looks like this was manufactured in the early 90s. Um, a lot of these components I can find no information on whatsoever. All of the data sheets don't exist as far as I can find, uh, and the few, inf the few bits of information I can find on any of these are mostly suppliers in America and the Far East which are offering to supply these obsolete parts for obscene prices. Um, I was quite surprised that even this little Intel chip down here, um, it's got an IBM uh, copyright of 1989 and an Intel copyright of uh, 1980 and I was surprised that I couldn't find any information on that. So I'm guessing that's some sort of processor, um, because it's uh, 1980, I'm guessing that's probably going to be in at 80, 80, 86. I could be wrong, but again, I, I can't look the part number up because as far as Google's concerned, it, it doesn't exist. Now, a lot of these Toshiba chips, these are the ones I can't find any information about. Um, I did. Uh, it was quite easy for me to find out what this one is. This little NEC chip is simply a floppy disk controller, which would make perfect sense because the floppy disk connector is just there. So this is very close to that. Um, a lot of it is, uh, a lot of these smaller ICs are just um, NOR gates and low-level logic chips. And these small uh, green surface mount packages here. Uh, these are just resistor networks so these aren't actually uh, integrated circuits or, or anything like that. Um, if we have a look at the front there's a couple of these proprietary connectors. Now these were covered up by uh, a small metal uh, shield but I removed that and I found these two metal, uh, sorry these two little plastic connectors. I don't really know what they're for uh, I did find uh, a, a massive PDF document on IBM's archive, which I'm going to give put a link to in the description, so you can have a look through that. I did skim across it and try and find any information about this, but um, because because this is uh, just a, a controller for what, what seems to be a much larger system, there's very little technical information about this, is, and uh, certainly no circuit diagrams or anything like that. So obviously because there's a, a lot of part numbers which I can't find information about, there's going to be a lot of um, speculation and best guesses uh, and, and that sort of thing because that's the only way I can really uh, have a look at this. So here we've got two, um, we've got two 28 pin packages. Uh, I'm guessing these are memory controllers because these are very close to the two memory expansion slots. Now I will admit I was wrong about this, this memory module at first. Um, the, this model did actually come shipped with the two megabytes of memory so this has not been upgraded as I first thought. 
There's another Toshiba chip down here. Again, part number is unknown, but um, judging by the fact that there's two uh, memory ICs just here, very close to it, and also it's in close proximity to this connector, I'm guessing this would be some sort of interface chip to um, to interface whatever this would connect to, whether it's an expansion or memory or, or whatever this connects into. It could even be some sort of um, diagnostics port um, because, because it's on the front of the machine it could just be for diagnostics or something like that, but again I, I'm not really sure. Now I did find out that uh, I did find that this was quite interesting. There's a load of bodge wires coming off of this small uh, quad NOR gate, and these go all over to these um, to these various little pads. Some of these go into the resistor networks, but a few of them are going into these these two ICs here and this one here. When I traced it back, and this ends up in this uh, what, what I guess is a memory controller. And now apart from that, there's not really much I can say about this. Um, I, I am completely guessing now, but um, these four BNC ports, as you can see, um, we've got a series of components which support these here. Um, we've got a lot of low-level logic um, ICs here. And then we've got what, what could be a network controller, which would, um, which would interface with all four of these BNCs. Now we've got another Toshiba IC here, um, we've got a lot of um, NOR gates, um, op amps and, and things like this. There's a few capacitors and resistors here and a couple of resistor networks as well. And these all go to that 25 pin uh, male connector on the back. So this is some sort of uh, proprietary interface because from what I can see on IBM's uh, PDF document, which I'm going to link in below, um, all, of these, um, all of these protocols, they weren't open like uh, Ethernet or anything like that. These were all proprietary, so this would only talk to other IBM equipment which is uh, typical of IBM really. Um, they wanted to lock companies into only buying equipment from them. So uh, once they buy one piece of IBM equipment, they have to buy everything by IBM regardless of the price because otherwise uh, nothing will work with it. Um, we've also got another part here. Now I, I looked this up and this is actually a SCSI controller, but since that there's no SCSI connectors on the back, I'm not really sure what that's there for. So maybe they're using part of that um, part of the silicon die for something else. Maybe there's something on that on that um, SCSI controller which they're using for another purpose in this design. It could be a SCSI controller, it could be used as a SCSI controller, but uh, I, I can't see how because there's no way of connecting any SCSI devices into here. Um, we've got a couple of high-speed uh, memory ICs from Sony here. These are 8,092 bytes um, each, so you've got 16,000 16, bytes of high-speed memory. So this is probably between the, um, this is probably talking, uh, it's probably communicating between the ICs because a floppy disk controller um, would have more than enough bandwidth to talk to, uh, to communicate with a floppy disk, so I can't really see you needing high speed memory for that. Um, again, I, I'm not really sure what all of these are for, but um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the main processor because this is the only this is the only IC which I can find which has any vague resemblance to a processor, even though I can't find any information about it. Now I will upload high uh, high resolution photos of this, uh, and I'll put those in the in the um, I'll put those in the description so you can have a look at those. Um, but I'll I'll let you have a look at the power supply as well. Um, as you can see, this is just a a very basic power supply here, but it looks like it's been very well built. So as you can see, we've got this physical switch on the front. Now as I flip this switch you can actually see the switch at the back is physically being moved by this mechanism and there's um, a small cable here which has uh, a small steel cable in it which then actuates the switch at the back. So there's definitely uh, a clear 
line between high voltage at the back and low voltage at the front. Um, I mean this is this is nothing special really this is just a standard uh, 5 volt and 12 volt power supply um, it's just much larger than you'd find nowadays obviously because technology has improved components have got smaller and uh, designs have been a lot more refined but considering this still works and it's it's 25 plus years old um, I mean that's, that's pretty reliable so you can't really fault something like that um, there's not really much else I can say about this without part numbers, but I will upload those high resolution photos and uh, I'll put a link into the data sheet. So I hope you've enjoyed this little teardown and I'm going to try and get some more of that stuff taken apart very soon.